views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey, this is Desmina and this is Modern Odyssey on BronxNet and beyond. Today we're going to talk about music for film and TV. Our guest today is a Brazilian of Greek descent whose music career led him to New York. He has core music for films and TV shows and he has worked with executive producer Steven Spielberg and directors such as Robert De Niro and Denzel Washington. He's been twice nominated for Primetime Emmy Awards and he's the composer of the film Dark Waters, released in American theaters in November 2019. Marcelo Zervos, welcome to our show. Hello, Desmina. Very nice to be here. Thank you for having us here yeah. today in your studio. It's a real pleasure. You know, I watched uh, last week your film and um, it was really interesting, uh, you know, Dark Waters, it's about environmental justice and all these great actors. And of course, your music was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, when I saw your name, it looked to me so Greek. And I really want to get you on the show and discuss more about music and your work. So you told me that you have a Greek background. Your grandfather was Greek, right? That's right. My grandfather, uh, his name was uh, Nicolau, and he came from Rhodes. Uh, to Brazil uh, when he was uh, 12 years old. He was an immigrant. He came with his brother uh, who was 14. They came by themselves. They were so poor that not even the whole family couldn't come. So he was part of large immigration that actually he was meant to come to the United States. But, and, and then that didn't quite work out. And then he wanted to go to Argentina. But then the, the boat stopped in Brazil before he got to Argentina and he got off and that was it. So it was accidentally, he, you know, he made his life in Brazil. So how does it feel to be Greek outside of Greece? You know, I didn't really realize what, what it meant until was, I, I only really heard a lot of stories and Greek stories about my, my relatives and my grandfather and Rhodes. But when I visited Greece, I, I had a chance to visit Greece a few times and I really felt a real kinship with the place and the people and even though I don't speak the language I felt a real affinity and and uh, something very very deep you know about about the Greek people and I think obviously Brazilians share also a Latin heritage but um, but there was something that that runs even deeper and it really reminded me of, of Brazil a lot and how people are and how people live their lives and 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 f the idea of family and a lot of things that are that few very, very similar and consistent with Brazilian values. That's right. Uh, and how did you decide to become a composer? What does music mean to you? Um, I started playing the piano. That was the first thing that I, that, I, that, I, that I wanted to do was to figure out a way to play the piano. But shortly after, I, I fell in love with music through the music of the films and the films of my childhood, 80s films really. Spielberg movies and and uh, and also films like Blade Runner and Chariots of Fire, who happen to have a great the great Greek composer of Angelis composing for both uh, both of those scores, Blade Runner and Chariots of Fire scores that I've I listened to hundreds of times, and I didn't really understand even at that point even what that meant, and that there were people that did music for films, but I just knew that I loved the music and I love how the music made me feel things, and even when I listen to the music outside of the film, it still reminded me of the film and kind of made me have that experience again. And, and that's how I fell in love with music. Do you have any relatives in your family? Um, who are musicians? Who are no, musicians, yeah. Not, not really. My family, there, there, was no, there were no, no musicians. I mean, I, I, had a, I, I have a, a dear cousin who played the piano and who I remember that was my inspiration was watching him play the piano. But my family was, not, they were not, I mean, my father couldn't understand. He said that it was like, 
uh, you know, genetically impossible for me to be a musician because they say that it runs in family. So I don't know. I guess somehow it, it popped up, um, you know, in my genes somehow. But would you encourage your children to uh, work on music? Very much so, yeah. My oldest child, uh, uh, his name is Julian, and he's uh, almost 10, and he, he's been playing piano since he's four, and he's wow. <laughs> really into it and, and, yeah. and really, really enjoys it. So why do you think it's important um, to have music education? Uh, not only if you want to pursue music career, but also, you know, at school. Well, you know, there other than how I personally feel about music, I mean, there's, it feels like every week a new study comes out saying what the amazing impact that music has in the brain and in the developing brain and, and reading music, playing music, any kind of, of, of music making. And so I feel like it's, it's, it's crucial that, they're, they, that kids can have access to it. And I think regardless of what they're going to do with it, I think just having a little bit of an experience and there's like the, the brain side and also the emotional side that I feel like it's really uh, allowing children to ex express their emotions, you know, uh, um, early on. Mm -hmm. And also you, you also have the, when children play together in groups, bands, orchestras, whatever it is, there's this sense of collaboration and cooperation that is really amazing to, in a similar way to team sports, what, what team sports do. And music does that too. So I feel like every angle that you look at, it's a positive thing um, that a child has access to music education. They develop other skills. You yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what is the most challenging part about being a musician? Well, you know, it's probably kind of, in a way, the most mundane too, which is, you know, to make a living and like knowing, you know, essentially most musicians are freelancers and I'm certainly like that too. So you're always you know, you're very busy and then you're not busy and like that, that kind of the, the ups and downs of, of any kind of career and, and also just emotionally, sometimes you, you, you have a lot to, to put out and sometimes you're very tired, but, but I think the kind of irregularity of it is probably one of the big challenges and, and, and also trying to have the faith that it's going to work out and that things will will either, either get back in track or that it will, they will happen somehow. And what is the most rewarding experience about being a musician? I think it's just communicating emotions to people and, 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 and that kind of spiritual connection. I, I find music to be a very, very spiritual thing. And, and when people are watching a movie and they are moved by the movie and the music, and they'll come to me later and talk, wow, you know, this made me feel certain things and feel like, and same thing when I'm doing music that is not for film and it's just concert music, like feeling like you're, you're being part of, of somebody's emotional experience. I find that to be a really incredible thing that, you know, you, people can, you can exchange sort of energy, if you will, you know, with, yeah. with people that you don't know, sometimes people on the other side of the world that you never met but they're somehow being affected by it. And I feel like as a musician, you're in, in, in turn affected yourself about when, how people get affected by your music and it becomes kind of like a cycle that that's definitely for me what in a nutshell is the most amazing thing. So consciously or unconsciously, there is always a connection with, through music. Through music and through, through emotion really. Through emotions. And, through, and through music yeah. and through sound and yeah. And when do you feel most inspired to compose music? Um, you know, I don't really, some people I hear they have like a time that they're, they're really morning person or they, I think if I was left to my own devices, I didn't have young children, I probably would be writing all night long. That's kind of my natural, but since I have kids, I have to wake up very early. So, so I taught myself to become more of a, like a daytime morning person. But I think one of the great things with working with film is that they're very set schedules and set deadlines. So you have to kind of just do it and you learn i've been doing it for many years you learn to kind of train yourself to to just work when when you have the time and what themes do you do inspire your creativity are there any specific you know themes that you feel more inspired to compose music for um themes in terms of like in in in, in stories you mean or, or yeah. yeah or human stories or emotions or like the film Dark Waters that we're going to discuss yeah. more about it. I think, I think stories in general are how, are, are what inspire me. I th I've always been very 
interested. I remember even before I was into music, I loved stories. And I think a lot of kids like stories. They like to be told stories. And I think it's one of the ways that we let our imagination run. Yeah. And, um, and even before I, you know, I started, I was, I was able to write film, film music. I used to write music sometimes based on books that I, that I read and that I would like somehow that it would inspire me to write a piece of music. And I think I was kind of practicing to write film, uh, uh, music for film. And, and also one thing that is very specific about New York, I find walking around the streets mm. of New York, taking the subway, all of that to be very inspiring. I find it very seeing people and imagining, you know, each of these people has like a story and has like all these things that they're going through. And I find that again, that exchange of energy that happens when you're just maybe just walk by somebody on the street and you look at them and they look at you and you're never going to see them again, but it feels mm. like there's the this, energy. The, the energy is very inspiring to me. Yeah. And uh, to what extent has your music developed over the years? I think my music has become more, probably more cosmopolitan from being in New York for so long. I've been here for almost 30 years and, um, and I feel like that's one of the, uh, you know, New York, you're exposed to a lot of music from all over the world and you have like every culture or many, many cultures anyways represented here. Um, and I think my music became probably uh, when I lived here more cosmopolitan and also more American. I feel like American music at first, mm -hmm. the biggest source of influence for me was musical films and, and then Brazilian music too. But I feel like over time, American music, American classical music and jazz and all of that has become just as much a part of who I am uh, since I've been here now for most of my life. Yeah, and you've been twice awarded with Primetime Awards, right? And I've been yeah, nom nominated. Nominated. Yeah, nominated for okay. Primetime Emmys, yes. Nominated. Uh, but but what, I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what were the films that uh, you were, you've been working and yeah, they the, were nominated? Uh, the first film was called Taking Chance. It was a wonderful film with Kevin Bacon, um, a great, um, great actor um, and uh, who I grew up watching his movies, it was really, really exciting to, uh, to, to score a movie and then Footloose was like, that is definitely like my, my childhood. That was like the movie of my childhood. And also, he was very interesting also because he's, he's a musician himself and his brother, Michael Bacon, is a very accomplished film composer that does what I do. We've met over the years, you know, in, uh, uh, that had to do with a um, Marine, um, mm -hmm. A marine, a, a marine officer uh, who's from in the U.S. Marines who accompanies, decides to accompany the body of a fallen soldier who dies in Iraq back to his family uh, in the Midwest. And it's a very, very, very sad but very beautiful emotional mm -hmm. story. And there was very little dialogue in it, so the music really had to carry a lot of the movie. And it was a, it was a really wonderful, wonderful experience, a very emotional film. And also one of my favorite, like, human stories. Uh, I, I feel like I, I gravitate a lot of times for this kind of sadder stories. I think my music just works good for, for that. And, um, and the second time I was nominated was for a film called You Don't Know Jack, mm -hmm. starring Al Pacino. Um, and it was um, a biopic about Jack Kevorkian, who was also known as Dr. Death, and this, this guy who helped people uh, commit uh, suicide when they're very sick and and uh, was a very controversial figure but uh, ultimately a very fascinating uh, character. So Dark Waters that it's now in the in American theaters mm -hmm. is a tr it's based on a true story. Yes very much so. And I would like to ask you what inspired you most uh, when writing the music for the film? You know, sometimes you, you, you work on films and, and you're in it because of, because of the artistry of it and because of the storytelling. And sometimes if you're really lucky, you work on a film where that's out there, but then the message of the film really resonates with you. And that was the case with Dark Waters. The, it's a story of environmental justice and of a whistleblower, a lawyer played by Mark Ruffalo, who takes on gi this giant company, DuPont. And it's a very, it's kind of a David and Goliath story and I found it just extremely inspiring and, and I think in some ways as, as, as artists we are very inspired by stories like that of people that just against all odds decide to 
do something that seems impossible and and for the right reasons he was doing that to yeah. to help somebody and ultimately help an entire town and probably the entire world in a in a in a way of letting us know what was happening there and so so the story the idea of environmental justice is very very close to my heart i find that something that is uh Everywhere that you look at it, it feels to me like it's it's it, we are in a real crisis across the board, and it's nice when there are stories about people that have been able to change and and move the dial a little bit in a positive direction, which certainly is the case of Dark Waters. Even though it's a story that it's still unfolding, uh, it certainly I think I I think it already has created awareness about these chemicals and all of this thing that happened in this town in West Virginia and, and hopefully over time many more many people are going to watch this movie and, and, and find out about this really uh, very shocking but very true and very necessar necessary story to be told. Mm -hmm. How important is it to keep your values in the workplace? Very important. I think that's, you know, that's, that's all that we, you know, that, that we have. We have to, you know, I don't believe in that idea of that, you know, when you're at work, you should be a monster and try to beat everybody to, into, you know, a, you know and, and just be very contentious. I always believe that with goodwill and generosity, the best things come in life. And, and I feel like I try to bring that value to my workplace every day. Yeah, yeah that's very important. Yeah. And how did you come to compose the music for uh, Dark Waters? Um, I came to work on Dark Waters through the picture editor, um, was uh, a collaborator and friend of mine who I had worked over the years uh, many times from the very beginning of my career. The first feature film I did after having done a few short films was a film called Tully and he brought me in to do that project. And later I did a film called During the Floor that was very important uh, in my career. It was a film with Jeff Bridges and Kim Bessinger and it was the first studio film I worked on. And then later he kind of introduced me to Todd Haynes. So this guy, his name is Afonso Gonçalves, is a very, very talented, uh, amazing picture editor. And he, he really believes in my music and we, we've had a great time collaborating. And he introduced me to Todd Haynes and Todd Haynes really loved my music. He had heard uh, my music from other films and, and was very fond of it. And the opportunity came to work on Dark Waters and I was before he even said, would you like to, I already said, yes, I was, I was thrilled. So this sounds like, uh, you know, a combination of hard work and good luck. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's always key. You know, they say that like, you know, you know, luck is important, but you have to be prepared for when those opportunities come. And, and um, it's certainly, I found that I've had some really, really great lucky things that happened in my life and my career um, and luckily I had worked hard to be prepared for it and, and when the time came even if it was um, it can be very overwhelming to think you're going to score a movie and what it always feels a little scary even now after having done so many I still in the beginning I'm like oh my god you know what am I going to do is this you know and you always have this feeling that oh they're going to find out that you really <laughs> have no idea what you're doing and and it's this feeling that I think a lot of artists have but I think you know um, I think just working hard and and kind of trying to be prepared and trying to do your homework is is, is key yeah because sometimes people think that there is a key to success but is there a key or is it just hard work I think it's hard work you know I think Luck plays a role in it, and I think without some luck, you know, there are incredible t artists all over the world that don't get to, yeah. to exercise their profession because they haven't had the opportunity. Uh, so I definitely think um, that's, that's a factor, but I feel like hardworking, I've always been a hard worker and, and really believe in work ethic and being sort of the first to get to work, the last to leave, and, and kind of just not taking no for an answer. Yeah. And what was your approach on the film Dark Waters? Um, one of the things that, that Todd Haynes really wanted was to portray this idea of the singular fight, a fight of one person yeah. against this big, big, powerful. big, powerful entity. And so he really wanted to um, have the piano. He, it was very, he, he really thought that the piano would be the great sort of 
metaphor for that. And, um, and one of the most challenging parts of the film was that he, in the sort of the climax of the film, he wanted it to be just a solo piano piece. It takes nine minutes, and it's when the character Robert Lott figures out what's happening and what this chemical and Teflon and all of this stuff, we, we call the, that piece the Teflon Connection. And, and he, even though the rest of the score is quite thick with orchestras and strings and lots of electronic sounds, for that big climactic moment, he wanted to kind of take it down to this very naked and kind of bare kind of texture of the music. And, and kind of like I, the only thing I think of like when, when you see like a great actor and they want to command your attention and they speak very quietly. And you have to really pay attention. And I think he wanted the music to do that. The music to become very quiet, so you have to kind of you have to kind of lean in to to really figure it out with this character what's going on, and it was it was quite challenging. You know, I'd never had to do such a long piece with just a piano, and uh, it was fun. But uh, we recorded it right here uh, over a few days, and that particular piece is is the one that really took a disproportionate amount of time. It's also about almost. 25% of the score, so it was, it was a big chunk of, of the music of the film. So have, we, have you been um, composing the music while uh, the film was shooting? Was No, I came in when they were already editing. They okay. were done with the shooting and they had been editing. It was a very accelerated process, so I had to do it very, very fast. Um, we, I had like three weeks to write the score, which is a lot of, okay. a, a lot of music to write for not a lot of time. But uh, also there was the good side of that, which is you, everybody's on the same page, and I had real, real artistic affinity with, with Tom Haynes, and, and, and we really uh, hit it off creatively, and he really believed in what I was doing. And uh, what is your advice to, ins to inspiring musicians? I would say the main thing is like persevere. You know, I think my experience now, after being in this business for a long time, is that the people that I think are able to make it are the people that just persevere. And that's, I think I, from also working a lot in film and seeing directors trying to cr create films from scratch, which yeah. I find that unbelievable. Sometimes directors, even a director, somebody as famous as Robert De Niro, it took him 12 years to do The Good Shepherd. 12 years that Tell he me. just really was, and that's like a major star that the whole world knows. and. And I see many times directors that will be working on a single project for five, six years and just really focus. And so I've always found that to be very inspiring. Um, as a musician, not to say what I do is, 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 is easy, but I don't have to come up with millions of dollars and a crew of like a couple hundred people to do a, a piece of mine. And I find you know that directors are very inspiring that way. But I feel like in whatever area, of the arts and certainly music, I think perseverance and also having faith and, and in your mm -hmm. own voice. I think I see a lot of times people try to kind of, they feel like they have to do a certain thing and copy a certain sound or a certain style. And I think what I see the most translate into success, it's a combination of perseverance and also individual individuality. I think people want to know the specific style or whatever that that specific person has to offer and I think that's that's my advice for people to try to figure out who you are inside and what makes you unique that's very important yeah well thank you so much Marcelo for having us here today thank you thank you Desmond it's really nice to be here it's a real pleasure talking to you and and um, and thank you for having me thank you so much for uh, your for sharing Thank you so much for sharing your amazing story. And thank you so much for sharing Bronxnet Modern Odyssey. Do you know how to say bye in Greek? Uh, <laughs> no, tell me. Is it, is it well, I... Yasas. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. right, yes, okay. Yes, okay. So, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs>